Section 1. Listening Comprehension In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers you hear. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Listen to an example. On the recording, you will hear, That exam was just awful. Oh, it could have been worse. What does the woman mean? In your test book, you will read, A. The exam was really awful. B. It was the worst exam she had ever seen. C. It couldn't have been more difficult. D. It wasn't that hard. You learn from the conversation that the man thought the exam was very difficult and that the woman disagreed with the man. The best answer to the question, what does the woman mean, is D. It wasn't that hard. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Go on to the next page. Now, we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number one. Are you enjoying your coffee? It tastes extremely bitter this morning. What does the man mean? Number two. Can you tell me how often the philosophy class meets? It meets twice a week for an hour and a half each time. What does the man mean? Number three. I'm tired of just sitting here. Relax. I'm sure that the flight will depart within a few minutes. What does the woman mean? Number four. The science project is due next week. I suppose I'll have to start working on it now. What does the man mean? Number five. I'd like to order a dozen roses. Uh, do you deliver? Yes, we can deliver anywhere in the city by this afternoon. Where does this conversation probably take place? Number six. Did you enjoy the biology lecture? The professor droned on and on about cell division. What does the man mean? Number seven. What do I need to cash a check? I have to see a driver's license and a credit card. What does the woman mean? Number eight. Have you been able to find an apartment yet? 
It's difficult to find affordable housing in New York. What does the man mean? Number nine. Why were you so late in getting home from work? My boss had me finish all the month-end reports. What does the man mean? Number ten. Miss Jones did not look too happy as she left her classroom. She was angered by her rowdy students. What does the woman mean? Number eleven. The prices at this store are really outrageous. You can say that again. What does the man mean? Number twelve. I don't like this weather very much. We haven't seen rain like this for many years. What does the man mean? Number thirteen, Professor Martin. What do you think of the composition that I turned in last week? Without question, you need to improve the quality of your writing. What does Professor Martin say about the student? Number fourteen. Where should I go next? You must stand in this line so that the agent can check your passport. What does the man mean? Number fifteen. Did Paul get his work done? He couldn't finish the assignment because the library was closed. What does the woman say about Paul? Number sixteen. The lawyer spent hours and hours working on that case. It's true that he prepared hard for the case, but his work was for nothing. What does the man mean? Number seventeen. Do you know when the papers for Professor Jenkins' history class are due? They're due next week, aren't they? What does the man mean? Number eighteen. Are you happy with the work that the contractor did on your house? I'm rather dissatisfied with it. What does the man mean? Number nineteen. I can't find a typist to finish my term paper by tomorrow morning. Why not do it yourself? What does the woman suggest? Number twenty. I can't get this television set connected to the cable. Oh, it's as easy as pie. What does the woman mean? Number twenty-one. Is Bob doing a good job in the office? He never manages to turn in his budget reports on time. 
What does the woman say about Bob? Number 22. Has the auto mechanic told you how much work the car needs? He indicated that the repairs would be quite extensive. What does the woman mean? Number 23. Did Betty listen to what her boss said? She followed the directions to the letter. What does the man mean? Number 24. How's Walter doing in his new business? Well, he hasn't exactly been unsuccessful. What does the man mean? Number 25. Are you going to organize that closet this morning? I wish I didn't have to. What does the man mean? Number 26. Did Sally finish that difficult assignment? She gave up before she really got started. What does the woman say about Sally? Number 27. What did Peggy say about the job I did? She couldn't have said nicer things. What does the man say about Peggy? Number 28. Your new secretary seems to be doing a great job. Rarely did new employees take such initiative. What does the woman mean? Number 29. Did you enjoy taking care of the children all afternoon? If you had gotten here any later, I'd have been a wreck. What does the man mean? Number 30. I just got back from the market. So you did do the shopping. What had the woman assumed about the man? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part B. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation on a university campus. You seem to know your way around campus. Have you been here long? 
I'm a senior literature major. I'll be graduating next June. Your major is literature. Mine is too. But I'm just beginning my work in my major. I just transferred to this university from a junior college. Perhaps you could tell me about the courses you've got to take for a literature major. Well, for a literature major, you need to take eight courses, three required courses, and five electives. First, you have to take Survey of World Literature, parts one and two. This is really two courses, and it'll take two semesters, and it's required for all literature majors. The other course required for all literature majors is Introduction to Literary Analysis. You mean if I want to specialize in American literature, I still must take two semesters of world literature? Yes, because the two semesters are required for all literature majors. But I only want to study American literature. At least you can take all of your five elective courses in the area that you want. That's what I'll do then. Number thirty-one. What is the woman's status at the university? Number thirty-two. What does the man want to learn from the woman? Number thirty-three. How many total courses must a student take for a literature major? Number thirty-four. The man will probably take his elective courses in which area? Questions thirty-five through thirty-eight. Listen to a conversation between two friends. Wasn't that a fascinating lecture on dolphins? I didn't know that dolphins traveled in such large groups, or were able to communicate with other members of their group with those whistle-like sounds. And they also use clicks as a sort of sonar. I really couldn't understand that part of the lecture. You could? Yes, the dolphins use clicks to identify objects in the water. They can even identify tiny objects more than a hundred meters away using these clicks. Scientists believe that a dolphin may even have a sonar-like image in its brain of a distant object, so that it can identify the object long before the dolphin can actually see the object. So the dolphins use these clicks mostly to identify objects in the water. I think so, and they have considerably more ability to do this than humans do. It's hard to believe that in addition to these sonar clicks, dolphins are actually learning some human language. Yes, I believe that the lecturer said that some dolphins had already learned around fifty human commands, and that those dolphins were able to understand not only individual words but words clustered together in sentences. Dolphins must certainly be amazing animals to do all of that. I'm sure they are, and we're only just beginning to find out how intelligent they are. Number thirty-five. Where did the woman learn about dolphins? Number thirty-six. Why do dolphins use clicks? Number thirty-seven. Approximately how many human commands have some dolphins learned? Number thirty-eight. What does the man say about dolphin intelligence? This is the end of part B. Go on to the next page.
Now, read along with me as I read the directions for Part C. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about painting. Artist Grant Wood was a guiding force in the school of painting known as American Regionalist, a style reflecting the distinctive characteristics of art from rural areas of the United States. Wood began drawing animals on the family farm at the age of three, and when he was 38, one of his paintings received a remarkable amount of public notice and acclaim. This painting, called American Gothic, is a starkly simple depiction of a serious couple staring directly out at the viewer. Now listen to a sample question. What style of painting is known as American Regionalist? In your test book, you will read A. Art from America's Inner Cities B. Art from the Central Region of the U.S. C. Art from various urban areas in the U.S. D. Art from rural sections of America. The best answer to the question, what style of painting is known as American Regionalist, is D. Art from rural sections of America. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now listen to another sample question. What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? In your test book, you will read A. American Regionalist B. The Family Farm in Iowa C. American Gothic D. A Serious Couple The best answer to the question, What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? is C. American Gothic. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a welcome address by a member of a club. Welcome to this introductory meeting for new members of the Sierra Club. The Sierra Club is an organization whose goals are centered on the protection of the environment. It was founded in 1892 in San Francisco by naturalist John Muir, who is intent on preserving the natural beauty and harmony of the Sierra Nevadas in Eastern California. Today, the Sierra Club boasts almost 200,000 members in all 50 states of the United States. Through activities such as conferences, lectures, exhibits, and films, the organization works to continue the effort begun by John Muir. The Sierra Club also publishes a weekly newsletter, a bi-monthly magazine, and various books. Number 39. What is the main objective of the Sierra Club? Number 40. Approximately how long has the Sierra Club been in existence? Number 41. What area was John Muir especially interested in saving? Number 42. Where does the Sierra Club have members? Question 
Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk by a university employee. The next stop on our campus tour for new freshmen is the university sports complex. This university has extensive sports facilities and is dedicated to providing maximum student access to these facilities. On the right, you can see the university stadium, which is used for football and soccer, as well as track and field. The gymnasium straight ahead contains the arena that is used for basketball and gymnastics. The gymnasium also includes an up to date exercise room with a large variety of the latest equipment. The exercise room is open to any student with valid student ID, not just members of athletic teams. The pool complex is behind the gymnasium, and that is also open for general student use, except when the swim team, the diving team, or the water polo team is practicing. To the left, you can see the tennis courts and outdoor volleyball courts. It is possible to take instruction classes in these sports, or you're welcome to sign up for court time at the athletic department office if you just want to play with some of your friends. These are just some of the sports facilities that are available to you here, but I think you can see that this university makes an effort to provide the best opportunity for its students to take part in sports. Now, let's continue on to the Art Center. Number 43. Who is probably listening to this talk? Number 44. What is needed to get into the exercise room? Number 45. Where should a student go to reserve a tennis court? Number 46. What will the students probably do next? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a talk given by a professor. Today's lecture is on the difference between the two literary styles of realism and naturalism. These two styles have in common a faithfulness to actual experience and a mistrust of idealism. Although they do have several similarities, realism and naturalism should be clearly differentiated. The realist objectively reports on events. With the accuracy of the description as the prime motive. The naturalist, on the other hand, has more of a philosophic bent. Naturalist writings express the writer's philosophy that human actions are determined by natural laws, such as heredity and environment. Number 47. This talk would probably be given in which of the following courses? Number 48. What point is the speaker trying to make about realism and naturalism? Number 49. Which of the following best describes realism? Number 50. Which of the following does not influence human actions according to naturalist ideas?